What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the six month, almost 11K miles review of the GLE 53. And what I'm going to do in this review is give you an owner's review. Now, like many of you guys are wondering, when you watch a lot of these car reviews, these guys have the car for a day or a couple of days. They run through all the specs, all that stuff, exterior. I'm not going to waste any time on that. I'm going to tell you what it's like owning this car and the things you'll become aware of only after owning this car. So we'll start exterior. Car is fantastic. Just like you see it, you're going to love it. It's definitely an eye catcher. Looks really cool. I really like the AMG package from having it as an actual AMG 53. I think it's definitely worth the upgrade from a 450 if you're considering the two. Looks really great. While we're on the exterior, the one thing, the standard brakes, since those are noticeable, the smaller ones, the silver ones, you're gonna realize they're great for everyday driving around the town. If this is for your wife, if you're a daily driver, casual, they're fine. If you're looking for performance driving, you're gonna be taking this fast and driving this more of a performance car. They're underpowered. They overheat, you're gonna start smelling the smell of burning brakes if you're doing a little bit of performance driving. They don't stop as hard. They don't have as much of a stopping power. And you really feel that when you're driving really fast. So if you're thinking about that upgrade to dynamic package, although I don't think it's worth it, given that that's included for free on the GLE 63. And I'll touch on why I don't think that's worth it later on. Now coming to the interior, this is where this car shines. BMW, Porsche, Audi, they're not even close. The GLE has the best interior and going with the AMG and being able to pick the executive leather just takes it to the next level. My only problem with this is it's an expensive option. It's $4,500. That's very expensive, right? So maybe going with that midway, the $2,900 one, the black and red, but it definitely adds a lot. The interior, the cabin on this car is where it stands out. It's fantastic. Make sure you get the wheel with the AMG buttons really adds a lot. Other than that, really enjoy the car. I recommend the sunroof, microfiber headliner. It's nice. Is it worth $1,600? I don't think so. You can skip that one. Acoustic comfort package, definitely worth it. This makes this car, you have to understand you're not buying like a performance car. It's a luxury that can also be a performance SUV. And the acoustic comfort package does that. It blocks out so much noise it really gives it that luxurious feeling of you're in here, you're not hearing the traffic, you're not hearing the noise. And it just, it just, the best way I can describe it is, it gives you what this car does best. This car is not a sports car, but it's not also like a boring luxury, you know, slow, don't feel bumps at all SUV. It's a little bit of both. You have the comfort and comfort mode, with the acoustic comfort package, you can't hear anything. It's relaxed, it's serene. You have the autonomous driving, which we'll touch on later. A lot of the other features, you can get the heated seats, massage seats, ventilated seats. So you have that experience. But at the same time, it's dynamic, it's agile, it's comfortable. So I think having the acoustic comfort is very important. I've driven GLE 350, 450s without it. It's noticeable and it's especially noticeable on the highway as you start picking up speed and tire noise and other ambient noise comes in. That one is definitely a package worth getting. The rest about the car, ventilated seats to me are worthless. Even on max, you don't really feel them. Hence, because these are not active, they just pull in air from the back. If you're in a hot climate, still get them, although it doesn't really do much. I think the massage seats are awesome. I think a lot of the other features you can get in here, the, the cooled cup holders, things like that, definitely get the four zone climate control. If you don't, it makes the back look really cheap, like a Toyota 4Runner. It's just the two slats, whereas you get the four zone climate control. They have their own climate control back there. Adds a lot. What else can I really say about the interior? It's fantastic. Let's talk about the sound system. Everybody that's been in the car, that's listened to it, loves it. It's fantastic and it's included for free, which is great. What's also very interesting, and this kind of blew me away, this sounds a lot better than a GLE 350, even though they're, they're both base Burmeister. When I had this car in for service, and the dealership gave me a GLE 350, a modern one, not the, the old generation, it was much worse sounding. So while they're both the base Burmeister, my suspicion is they're using better quality speakers in the AMG line even though they're both Burmeister. Something to be aware of. 
Now, for an audio file, I'm an audio file, I'm a person who spends a lot of money on headphones, on amps, on having the best speakers. I really enjoy sound. To me, this sound system is not there. You have to put on the surround sound effect. If not, it sounds really empty. What I also don't like is there are no dedicated subwoofer. The subwoofer is here in the bottom. And the problem with that is when you don't have that surround sound on, what you end up with is a very front sounding sound. It's very mid heavy. The, the highs are not bad, but it's missing a real low end, a real bass. I don't like it. I feel like it's a C mediocre if you're an audiophile. If you're not a person who's crazy about music and you don't have FLAC, you don't know what FLAC is, you don't have a large music connection, you're serious about it, you can skip the, the high end Burmeister system, which is $4,500. In my opinion, do I think it's worth it? I'd say probably not. If you're somebody that wants those, uh, those tweeters here, you know, the LED ones, just go to an aftermarket shop, get those, get them installed and you have the effect for much less than the high-end Burmeister. If you love the high-end Burmeister sound, look of having all those speakers and the added, the added subwoofer, not only that, it's a better amp, everything's better about it and you're a music person like me, it's an option I recommend you get, although unfortunately, it's not available for the 2023. I'm ordering a GLE63S and they're telling me it's not available on any model for 23, so that's unfortunate. What else we touch about on the interior? Overall quality, I love it. I love the ambient lighting. This car is, every time you drive at night, people can look through and see. It's an eye catcher, best cabin, hands down any SUV. The only seats I like better than these are the ones in the Urus. And the only thing I like better about the Urus are the seats. I like them and I like the center console with the gauge. Everything else I think is better on here. The, L, the ambient lighting is better. The overall look layout, finish is better it's just it's the top tier right now no other car maker is making interior cabins like this so that's definitely something to be aware of the other thing you need to be aware of when you have this car that not many people know the ride in the front seats is comfortable the ride in the back seats is awful okay you can feel every bump you're going to be bounced around rackety it's almost like a cheap compass i'm exaggerating but the ride in the back seats you have anybody riding in the back seat, it feels much harsher. The speed feels faster back there. It's just not compensated for comfort. So if you're gonna be using the back seats a lot, be aware of that, that the comfort's not there. Once again, this is without the dynamic package, this is with the base suspension. Talking more about suspension, I'm really amazed at how well it grips, how agile it is at high speeds. I've taken this up to 138, really fast really nimble which is kind of impressive for what's already included as a base you know air suspension aromatic adapted for amg i really like it i think it's really a lot of performance for what you're getting the base the base on this is 76 78k with no options and you get all that included so remember that the engine is not going to change and aside from the dynamic plus package everything that you're getting included there all the stuff you're going to be adding is more of luxury quality of life improvements some other thoughts after having this for a while. The number one thing, when I first got it, I thought it was faster because it has that new car feeling. After having this for a while, my wife concurs. This is great for a woman or a person who wants this as a daily driver. You don't really care about having the performance. It's fast enough for a daily driver overtaking highway, does all that great. What I feel it's missing is speed. Sport Plus to me is wasted on this. You're just burning gas for nothing. It's slow. The car is not fast. You were talking about a 0 to 16, 5.2, 5.3 seconds. It's very, very slow. For competitors here, BMW, Audi, Porsche, they'll be in the mid fours to low fours for the same price category. I think AMG is dropping the big ball here and it's because this car is really missing torque. This should easily be at 4.5 seconds 4.6 if you want to be generous but 5.2 5.3 in this segment it's embarrassing that's where this car really falls off but when you factor everything else this car does everything else the interior the aesthetics personally i think it looks the best exterior there could be a case made for the x5 but i think it looks better than all the other competitors audi porsche bmw exterior Interior, hands down, there's nothing even close here. Maybe the second place I'd give to Porsche, but then you're overpaying for options there. It just doesn't even make sense. I mean, the doors might as well be options, the handles, the windows. It's ridiculous what Porsche is doing. 
So when you factor all that in, I would still take this one. I think this is the best car overall. But the other thing I'd be aware of too is in, inspect your car. I had some issues when I first got it. I had a rattle, which was the left door panel would rattle at a certain frequency revving up. You hear a little bzzz sound. Diagnosed it, was replaced under warranty. They had to order and replace the entire panel there. Only other issues I had is what everybody's been having since you get it. When you first get the car and you're driving it, when you're shifting from third to second gear, it'll lurch forward. And when you first have it, it lurches hard, like it'll slam you forward. Luckily, that's resolved itself with driving and a lot of time, but it still happens here and there. Speaking also about the transmission, from a stop, hard accelerations are fantastic. In Sport, in Sport Plus, Sport Plus will get you all the way to 433 horsepower. It's saying more than recorded 429. It really pushes fast. But here's the issue. If you're driving, let's say like I'm driving right now, Comfort in sixth gear, or I'm driving on the highway in Comfort or Sport, and I'm just cruising, when you stomp on it, or even if you switch to Sport Plus and stomp on it, the transmission is lazy. It does not switch right away to the highest gear. It'll maybe drop down to fourth gear when it really should be in third, or fifth when it should be in fourth, and you have to assist it with the paddle shifters, which is really annoying. There's something going on there. Speaking of that, the comfort throttle is so delayed and lazy, it's actually dangerous. Sometimes you'll be cruising comfortably and I wanna overtake quickly or I wanna jump in front of somebody or turn and, and, and join traffic and I stomp on the, the throttle in comfort, it does nothing for two, three seconds. And even when it starts accelerating, it's so slow and sluggish. I've almost gotten in an accident, which is kind of annoying because then if I wanna accelerate hard, I gotta switch to sport just to have access to my throttle. Another thing to be aware of there, I mean, it's just annoying, I think, some daily comfort things to be aware of. It should not be there for the price point, it should really be sorted out. I'm comparing the Urus again because it's another car I'm considering. The Urus in comfort's fantastic. You stomp on it, it moves. That transmission handles really well and each going up, you know, to a Sport and a Corsa, which is their Sport Plus, you get like a more, aggression faster throttle response here in the gle 53 comfort is almost dangerous unless you're cruising you got to really switch to sport to get access to your throttle and then sport plus if you want that fast reaction but even then there's that issue i told you guys about other things to be aware of it's not good on gas i don't expect it to be good on gas but the whole 48 volt start stop thing i think it's a gimmick maybe it saves on gas but I haven't noticed anything. If you're driving it on the highway like a grandpa, and I'm talking boring, not enjoying the car, very, very easy on the throttle, like I'm doing right now, like you treat it like an egg, or you're using the adaptive cruise control, you can get about 22 miles a gallon, 23. If you're driving it like I, I've driven it, I've had it for almost 11,000 miles, I've averaged about 16.9 miles per gallon. When I put it in Sport Plus, and I'm driving crazy, it's maybe 10 to 13 miles per gallon. Otherwise, my average on the highway in the city, 15 to 17, and that's enjoying it. Uh, not really even enjoy it, to be honest, you're just driving it and, and pushing a little bit down the throttle. So it's not gas efficient. You gotta remember that, and on top of that, you don't really have a lot of performance to go with it. So something to be aware of for you guys who are gas efficient nerds, but I don't understand why you'd be buying this car if you're worried about gas. It takes premium, it's just whatever it is. If gas is an important cost for you, my financial advice to you, this is not a car that you should consider. Last but not least, the paddle shifters. I really wish they would not mount them to the steering wheel because as you're turning, you can't really shift up and down. But another thing that I found, I was getting over that lurch where it like stops you and hits you back by over limiting, when by over revving it so many times because the paddle shifters have a lag to them. As you see it going up, you have to push it almost a second ahead of time, a half second, for it to shift correctly because there's a delay from when you press it to when it shifts. Very annoying, which you just default to using Sport Plus because it's better than that and helping it downshift because it's lazy there. But if you're planning on using the, the paddle shifters, the best feature about them is with the AMG Performance Exhaust, the flaps open, first, second, third, fourth gear, playing with the refs to get the pops and crackles. I like the pops and crackles. My last thing to recommend for you guys, do not get this car without the AMG Performance Exhaust. You can always turn it off, close the valves, but opening it up adds a lot of fun. Even given it's not that fast, it's very, very enjoyable to make that sound. 
And with the acoustic comfort package, they still pipe in some sound, so you can still hear it. And when you open up the windows, open up the moonroof, it's fantastic. So those are my overall thoughts on it. I think it's a great car. It's a fantastic car. There's nothing on the market right now that beats it, in my opinion. There's obviously some issues, but like all cars, nothing's going to be perfect. I just wish it had more performance. I think that for the pricing, it would be perfect if it was a 4.5, 4.4 to 4.6, 0 to 60. The way it is right now, it's too slow. This is why I'm getting a GLE 63S to replace this. But if it's your daily driver and you don't care about performance, or and it's for your wife, it's for somebody that doesn't really care, just wants a really cool car to have fun with, chill with. This is a great car. What I think the GLE 63S, the Urus, a lot of these other cars, the X5M competition try to do is there for those of us like me who are very, very tall and cannot fit or do not like having to hunker down to get into a sports car. And two, you want both in one. You want a car that's a sports car when you want it to be a sports car and a car that's a comfortable SUV that can be an SUV when you want it. And that's why I love this one over the coupe. The coupe, the Urus, the XX, X6, all those cars, you can't sit in the back if you're an adult and you're missing trunk space, which defeats the purpose, versus this, which you have all the trunk space, everything, and the performance, especially go GLI 63S. Let me know what you guys think. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll talk soon.